Blake from Bastion Black Performance again, and uh, haven't been out of the video in a long time. Been busy on the training side of operation and stuff, trying to get this going. So, um, kind of jacked up my knee really bad training yesterday. So I thought I'd talk about something I've wanted to do forever, and I just have not got around to. So we're going to talk about um, German Blitzkrieg, and we're going to compare it a little bit to Russian Deep Battle in a follow-on video. So I'm using air quotes because Blitzkrieg never existed. It was mostly a Western concoction um, to kind of deal with the failures against the, the German army initially in World War II. Um, the Germans never used it in any official capacity, um, but the Western, you know, again, it became kind of a propaganda tool. So I put there, um, next to Blitzkrieg, I put Bewegungskrieg, which in German just means movement war, and that's what they called their operations. I mean, going back, uh, you know, even into the 19th century, but Bewegungskrieg, I'm going to use Blitzkrieg because it's a common vernacular, but so let's talk a little bit about what it is, okay? So Blitzkrieg or movement war um, was a method of operations the Germans used um, very successfully in the early parts and at various parts of World War II, and it has a lot of bearing on the modern realm and things that we do um, today with our combined arms assault. So that's why it's good to know about it. So um, kind of some of the, the main um, parts, the main descriptors uh, that we've got to have with this. So the first one I put there is surprise. What makes um, the German operations, the German Blitzkrieg work is the element of surprise. So when you look at their operations that were successful, or at least initially successful, um, they almost always, to a T, had the element of surprise. Um, so you look at, especially in Falgelm, um, the invasion of France and the Low Countries in 1940, um, their actual main focus of their assault was a total surprise, a total shock to um, the British and the French, and obviously they had huge success with that. So surprise, absolutely critical. When you look at their primary failures in operations later on in the war, um, almost always no surprise whatsoever. The Battle of Kursk, Operation Citadel, hugely obvious one there. Next, I put speed. So what makes um, an, an armored assault or something like this work is that once the tactical level of the battlefield is breached, um, then the operational and the strategic objectives are assaulted with speed to not allow the enemy to retreat and to escape, but to take objectives that can bring about successful battles, successful wars. So as we talked about in other videos, the goal is not really to kill or capture enemy troops per se in modern warfare because there's so many of them. It's to capture strategic objectives that in some way diminish your enemy's uh, ability to fight logistically um, and from a morale standpoint. So, um, towns that have lots of uh, roads and rails through them, major convergences of railheads, railway depots, things like that, ports, um, strategic terrain such as you know high ground, bridges, that sort of stuff, these are the things that have an actual strategic or operational impact on the battle, as opposed to just killing the troops. Alright, so third one down there is combined arms. This is one thing that made um, initial German success is very, um, very intense and very good, is that we know that artillery causes the majority of the casualties in modern warfare, um, and so it's a huge um, threat to not only the troops, but to the armored elements, to the actual tanks and the armored personnel carriers that we have. So uh, what, the, what the Germans did initially that was very successful was they would use their own artillery um, to obviously soften up and to attack certain objectives on the enemy, they used their tactical air power of the Luftwaffe to assault the enemy artillery in exact coordination with the assault of the armored element. So if you read the you know, various German generals' memoirs and stuff of the war, they talk about trying to plan this down to the exact minute. So at some point, they will have to make a frontal assault on enemy uh, positions in their initial armored thrust, and so having the Air Force assault the enemy artillery to allow them to make this breakthrough, which then opens up the tactical realm, allows them to break through and pursue. So combined arms, being able to combine the tactical air power, um, the infantry and armor, the artillery, but also the other thing that they did very well in the early parts of the war that was kind of new was they combined what they call pioneers or we call engineers or combat engineers into their elements. So they had these people who could perform demolition um, build bridges and things like that, and assault uh, you know these various um, you know hardened positions that they needed to. So they had high levels of coordination amongst themselves. They also had um, liaison officers to deal with the tactical air power and the artillery, which was very important, very crucial to um, their successful use of those uh, elements. 
So then uh, moving on to the other side, so I put Schwerpunkt, which in German just basically means focus point or focal point. So what makes Blitzkrieg sort of unique and different from Soviet deep battle, things that we'll talk about later, is every single part of an operation was developed around one focus point, which is the enemy's center of gravity. Basically what they do is they identify if we assault this particular objective and we take this particular set of objectives, this will bring about a collapse of the enemy's defense in this sector or in this battle or in this war. And so everything is directed at this one point. And so what that means is that while the Germans were typically outnumbered, especially on the Eastern Front, in both men and material, armor and all that stuff, um, the entire war from the very first second onward, they were able to achieve local superiority by directing themselves at these uh, Schwerpunkt, these focal points. And so that allowed them to prosecute these operations with pretty high levels of success at varying times, uh, while even being outnumbered um, on the battlefield elsewhere. Um, so below that I put bypass. A very important part of this sort of assault, um, and we do this today, is to bypass um, heavy fortifications, areas of heavy resistance, any place where you might be bogged down and lose your advanced speed. So, you see this on the Eastern Front primarily, um, over and over and over with the Germans, they bypass and they surround huge pockets of Soviet troops, uh, material, that sort of thing, and they leave them for the follow-on forces, the infantry, uh, who are primarily moving on foot, obviously have horse-drawn artillery still at this point. Um, so they bypass these so they can continually move and prosecute their uh, objectives. And then below that, I put kind of the last part of it is uh, what they call Kesselschlacht, uh, which uh, basically just means cauldron battle. I put kill the pocket, which is what we would say. So you have all these troops surrounding this pocket. You have to eliminate somehow. Whether it's actually destroying everybody inside of there, take them prisoner, um, starve them out with a siege. These are classical um, you know, things that we do there. But eliminating these pockets um, will free up more of your troops then to be available for the advance, but also it gets the enemy out of... Um, out of the, you know, your rear, out of your logistics. And so you see with successful um, operations, they were able to do this well, but you see with failures was when they were unable to deal with some of these pockets um, uh, of troops was definitely big. And this was a thing that really slowed the speed in various parts of uh, Barbarossa in 1941 was that, uh, and this is where Hitler and his generals had um, a lot of disagreements, but prosecuting these pockets can and does take time um, when the advance is halted. So, again, kind of bringing it all full circle, the main elements of a combined arms assault or a blitzkrieg assault, um, as a lot of people would know it, is that everything is focused on one particular objective, um, high amounts of coordination among all your arms, artillery, air power, infantry, armor, um, engineers, that sort of stuff, all working towards one objective, uh, moving with the utmost speed and using surprise. So having these elements are things that we obviously do today, so that's why I like studying this stuff, is because it gives you insight into what we do now and why it works. Um, and also, um, there were some spectacular failures. So what you can learn and what you can read later on is uh, initially very successful operations the Germans had with this because when an enemy breaks through and gets deep into your lines, into your strategic areas, operational objectives, the tendency was for commanders to freak out and to panic. So then they would order retreats, they would fall back, um, and things like that, which is exactly what they wanted. They wanted to paralyze the tactical defensive front by assaulting uh, through that to strategic objectives. What you see later on, um, especially on the Eastern Front, because there's so much space and the Soviets had such vast resources of, of manpower and material, is that if a commander can keep his head, um, and if they can direct these assaults through, um, they can eventually drag you out and wear you out uh, through exhaustion and then attack your flanks, which is, what, uh, which is what the Soviets eventually did when they were able to stop the Germans in various operations. And then obviously later on they had the initiative, things changed around. But again, just putting out some information, guys. Remember, only the hits count and you can never miss fast enough to catch back up.